These are explanations for the biochemical tests. These tests are really important for helping you for identification of your unknown later in the semester. This will include exercises 57, 58, 60 through 63, as well as an additional uh, test at the end. Uh, these are all in your lab manual. So for exercise 57, it is the starch hydrolysis. You would inoculate a plate that a starch, ar, starch agar plate that has starch added as a carbon source, and then you would simply streak your organism on it. As this um, animated picture shows, the media after it has grown for 24, 48 hours, you would take the plate out. In the media, initially, is is the normal kind of yellowish, uh, tannish color. You would then add iodine. When iodine mixes with starch, it will turn a very dark brown, almost black color. And so if you flood the plate with iodine, as you can see on this picture, where there is um, no clearing, that would indicate where it's still that dark color around the streak that there's still starch present. So that would be a negative for starch hydrolysis. It wasn't able to break it down. When you have the clearing, such as that clearer, lighter color rectangle around the streak, that means that the starch around where you streak that bacterium is gone. The bacteria was able to break down the starch, utilize it, so it would be considered positive for a starch um, degradation or starch hydrolysis reaction. Usually you do that after 24 hours of growing the organism. As I said, positive would be clearing after adding the iodine. Negative, it, there would be no clearing. It, the whole plate would remain a very dark black, almost dark blue color. Exercise 58 deals with catalase production. Catalase is the enzyme that would break hydrogen peroxide, which is H2O2, down to water, which is H2O, and oxygen, which is O2. If this enzyme is present, what happens is it will break that, that hydrogen peroxide. And if you're observing the reaction, then what will happen is you will see bubbles being formed. What we're going to do is you will grow the plate, or the, the culture on a plate, just a regular plate like nutrient auger or TSA, triplicate soy auger, where you have nice growth. After about 24 hours, so you have good growth on it, what you would do is just carefully lift the lid. You would add the hydrogen peroxide directly to the culture. If bubbles form, what those bubbles are is the oxygen that is being produced because the bacteria is able to break down that hydrogen peroxide that you've just added. So if you see the presence of bubbles, that's a positive. If there's no bubbles, that means there's no oxygen being generated. Why? Because the particular organism does not have the catalase enzyme present to break the hydrogen peroxide down. Once again, you'd be using about a 24-hour-old culture. And once again, you just do this on a, a regular TSA or nutrient auger plate. Exercise 60 is looking for the production of hydrogen sulfide. Uh, for this, we would use what we call a sim auger tube. Uh, we'll see this again later in this particular exercise. Uh, all we are looking for is the hydrogen sulfide production. SIM stands for sulfide indole motility. There's a later exercise where we will look at both the indole and the motility aspect. We could look at all three on this, but the purpose of this exercise is focusing on the sulfide. Hydrogen sulfide, if the organism is able to break the media down and produce this, it will produce a black color. If it does not produce uh, hydrogen sulfide, it would be negative, and there would be no black coloration at all. There is no doubt about whether it's doing this or not, as you'll see in the related videos of the test results. Exercise 61 is what we call the MVIC exercise. Once again, this is a multi-test um, exercise. What MVIC stands for is indole, methyl red, box prosker or VP, and citrate. You're going to be inoculating or would have inoculated several different pieces of media. For the indole portion, you would have inoculated uh, 
either a SIM tube or a tryptocase soy tube. Once again, grow about 24 hours. After the growth, you would add, um, it, sometimes it goes by two different names, either COVAX solution or sometimes simply a reagent, indole reagent. You add about five drops of that. If you get a, just add it to the top of the tube, you don't have to mix it in. If it turns red, that is positive. If it remains kind of this colorless or pale yellow with the media, then that is a negative result. For the methyl red portion of this, you would have inoculated a tube that we call the MRVP, stands for methyl red Vox Prosker. For the methyl red portion, you inoculate a tube after 24 hours. You would then add five drops of the methyl red to that particular uh, tube. A positive would be red, a negative would be colorless or a pale yellow. The Volksprosker portion of this test, or VP, you would have to use a separate MRVP tube. You do not use the same one that you had at the methyl red reagent tube. After 24 hours of growth, this one requires the addition of two different reagents. We refer to them as Volksprosker A and Volksprosker B, or just VPA and VPB. First, you add the A reagent. You add about 10 drops of that. It can be anywhere from 5 to 10 drops. And then that's followed by adding 5 to 10 drops of the VPB reagent. Once again, you don't mix it. Just let it set. A positive would be a red color. Negative would be, once again, colorless to pale yellow. The last of the Invict series is the citrate. For this one, you would have inoculated a Simmon citrate tube. This is a slant. This is one of the real pretty tubes where microbiology has color. Normally, the tube is green. Uh, so when you inoculate it, it is green. Several organisms uh, may be able to grow on this. If you get a positive, it is turns a very pretty blue color. If it remains green, it is a negative color. Exercise 62 is looking at urea hydrolysis. Uh, what's happening here, if a particular organism has the urease enzyme, it breaks urea down to ammonia. Now, ammonia has a very high pH. So this media has phenol red as a pH indicator. We've seen that indicator before, like on the carbohydrate fermentation tubes. Uh, it turns yellow at an acidic or low pH. It will turn, it's kind of oranges at neutral, around pH 7. If it goes to a very high pH, it will turn uh, pink. Some people call it purple or fuchsia. There is no doubt about it. It is a very bright color. So you would inoculate the urease uh, broth. It's a liquid broth. And then after 24 to 48 hours, look at it. If it is that pink, fuchsia, purple color, it is a positive. If it remains kind of a yellowish orange color, it is negative. Once again, all of the, uh, these tests, biochemical tests, there is a video link that shows the actual pictures of what the results would look like. Exercise 63 is looking at fat hydrolysis or lipid hydrolysis. This uses spirit blue auger that does contain triglycerides in it in the media. Uh, triglycerides are lipids or fats, so that's what you're looking to see whether the organism can break those lipids down. Um, this has a little bit different result than what's stated in your book of the way we make the media. It's called spirit blue, and in this case, the way we make it, a positive test would be if you have clearing of the blue dye. If the entire plate remains blue, then that is a negative result. The oxidase test is also an important biochemical test. It is not listed in your lab manual, but it's an additional one that we add. And the results of this um, are listed on the chart for the bacterial organisms that we've worked with throughout the semester, which could be one of your unknowns later in the semester. What the oxidase test is doing is looking um, to see the presence of this particular enzyme, cytochrome C oxidase. That enzyme is necessary to run the electron transport chain. So if it's present, then that means the organism can grow aerobically. It can go through the uh, 
oxidative phosphorylation, produce all that ATP by running through the electron transport chain. To test for it, you can simply grow the organism on a nutrient auger plate. You can grow it on a TSA plate. Some books will tell you to take a sample of the growth, smear it onto a slide or onto a piece of paper. You can actually just test it on the plate. Whether you have it on a slide, a piece of paper, or on, the, say, a nutrient auger TSA plate, just pick a section where you have growth, add the oxidase reagent. You just need to add a couple drops. You may need to let it sit for just a couple minutes. It's not an instantaneous reaction. What will happen is if this enzyme uh, is present, it's capable, it will break down the reagent and it will turn it a purple or dark blue color. That would be a positive result. If there is no color change, that would be a negative result. So hopefully this helps, uh, at least with a brief explanation of the test, the biochemical testing that would be done. Once again, you need to know how to run these tests. This is what you would be doing for identification of your unknowns at a later date.